Welcome to Traditional Stitches Floss 2 video number 5. I'm Janice Spencer, the owner of Traditional Stitches. As promised, this video contains my question and answer session with Nicola Parkman of Hands Across the Sea Samplers. You'll find that video tagged on to the end of this one, and so I hope you'll stay tuned and watch it through. I do want to talk to you about a few things that are going on in the shop right now. I am a little bit of out of sorts today. Um, every year on this day for the last 16 or 17 years, I would be on an airplane on my way to the Nashville Needlework Market. So it feels a little bit strange to me not to be going, um, but I am so excited that our designers have gotten together and created the Needlework Expo. So this is a virtual trade show that's only open to Needle Workshop owners that I will be attending virtually this weekend. Diana, who works in our shop, has done a great job of updating our website with previews and advanced um, pictures of the designs that will be released. So I invite you to visit that and I will link everything below in the box. Um, but I also invite you to follow Needlework Expo on Facebook and the Needlework Expo hashtag on Instagram so that you can see everything that comes out as soon as we do. Um, we won't be able to put everything on our website, but if you do find things that released at the Expo that you're interested in, just drop us an email and we'll see what we can do to bring it in for you. So I'm really looking forward to spending some quality time this weekend virtually with our designers, but I also have some special wine dates set up with some of my favorite people in the world that truly know what it is to do what we do in our shop, and that is uh, our shop owner group. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so this week I got to go visit my framers, and in addition to some um, beautiful samplers that I have on my wall here, which I'll talk about in the section with Nicola, I was able to pick up a framed version of our Blackbird Designs Traditional Stitches Exclusive Anniversary Sampler. And so, this is What Remains is Love. Let's see if I can get... Oh, see, there went the color. I'll post some pictures, I'll insert them here of the cover shot um, so that you can see it in a little bit better of lighting. And um, also I'm going to insert my office manager Kathleen is stitching the model that is done with our friend Amy Mitten fiber to die for hand dyed silk thread that we're providing the conversion for for this sampler. So Kathleen's making great progress but um, she is missing a couple colors of thread that are on the, in the mail on their way to us from Amy. So um, watch for an uh, update on that in not too very long. So the anniversary sampler, or Blackbird What Remains is Love sampler, we're um, definitely on schedule to start shipping kits for the orders that were first in line towards the end of March. And in fact, if you were one of those earlier orderers, you might see us billing you for that next week. Uh, just we're trying to get as organized as we can to get as many out the door as we soon as we can. Um, our suppliers are working really hard to get us as much linen and threads as we need. So as that comes into the shop, we'll cut up the linen, we'll package up the orders and have them out to you. Um, just remembering that everyone that works in the shop is human beings and we work as hard as we can, but sometimes not as much as we think gets done in the course of a day. So um, we are still happy to accept new orders. Um, any new orders will probably be shipping in a couple of months, um, but you're welcome to join us and make sure that you don't miss out on this Blackbird Designs exclusive sampler. So um, those of you who joined us in the Ann Morrison sampler uh, that ordered your sampler through traditional stitches, 
would have gotten a free PDF download to the Heather Jardine sampler. And um, so unfortunately the Ann Morrison sampler sold out, so the PDF's not available anymore. But I had a very pleasant surprise when I went to my framers this week and um, saw on her wall, waiting to be picked up by a customer, a finished Heather Jardine sampler. So being snoopy, I picked it up and looked at the initials that the stitcher had put on the bottom of the sampler and immediately recognized that it was done by my very best friend. So I'm going to insert that picture here for you all to see. She doesn't know I'm doing this, but I'm going to. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you was um, the video that I am going to show next of my interview with Nicola, I actually pre-recorded and I forgot to mention something in it, so I'm going to share it with you now. The other thing that I picked up from the framer was this. This is the Jane Marshall sampler that was the Hands Across the Sea fundraiser when the fires were raging through Australia. And um, so it is now still available as a PDF download, and um, I'll link that below to our website. We've certainly still got kits available, but I did want to just share this sweet little framed piece that I got back from my framer. So this is stitched on the 5363 Sycamore Seed Pod Linen using Swasserfeen. And this was a project that I stitched right when um, we went down, it went into lockdown in March of 2020. And um, I got a lot of comfort and um, passed some time with this. So it's a very sweet sampler. I'm very impressed with how it turned out with the green frame. And so if you haven't had a chance to download this, I encourage you to do so. The colors are just beautiful and I loved stitching this section here. So that's about it from me. So stay tuned for my interview with Nicola, which is tagged right on to the end of this video. Welcome to our special video interview with Nicola Parkman of Hands Across the Sea Samplers. We are celebrating our Ann Morrison sampler this year. And so we wanted to ask Nicola a few questions specific to the sampler. Hi, Nicola. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Very good today, thank you. Hello, how everybody. are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Good. So um, the first thing that I want to say is that I am so happy for the timing of this video because normally today we would be together. We would be, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Rushing we would around. Be, <laughs> yes, we would be at the Nashville Needlework Market. We would be having meals together and visiting mm -hmm. and poking around in samplers, looking at motifs and identifying unique things and and, um, mm -hmm. just sharing our love for needlework. So mm -hmm. I'm very glad to be able to spend some time with you today. And me too. <laughs> so a few questions have come in about our Ann Morrison sampler, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about is um, how you as a designer feel about people doing um, customizations, color changes, that kind of thing to your samplers? Well, it's not my sampler. <laughs> I think it's very important to make your sampler your own sampler. And it doesn't bother me at all, people personalizing their samplers. And I really think that when you do, you are following in the footsteps of those little girls when they stitch their sampler as well. All those little girls in Anne Morrison's class at school, their samplers would have been similar, but they would all have been different. And I think that's lovely to see um, when you're in a stitch along, you get to see the different things that people do as they stitch their samplers. And I quite often think, gosh, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> well, a group like this is quite inspiring um, mm. to think outside the box. 
generally mm -hmm. as a shop owner, when I'm stitching a model, I try to be very true to the chart mm -hmm. so that when customers are in my shop, what they're looking at on the wall is very true to what their finished product That's could right. be. So stitching I don't and model is, you know, stitching a model is a different set of responsibilities than stitching a sampler for yourself. And this is one of the lovely things about this stitch along for me. I'm not stitching a model, the model has already been stitched. I'm stitching Anne on a personal basis. So I feel that I have a freedom with Anne um, to make her my own. And I have lots of things in my mind about what I want to do with my Anne as well. <laughs> Well, we'll look forward to seeing that as the group progresses. In some ways, it's hard to believe we're only getting into our fourth month of the sampler. It seems like Anne's been with us for quite a lot longer than that. It does. <laughs> Uh, so the, some examples, I've got my chart right here, so I just want to show a few examples of things that we've seen people change along the way. Um, we've seen definitely the linen being changed and thread colors being changed. Uh, see if I can show this. And this was one thing that I was tempted to do with my sampler was on the end of this row here. Yes. Where there's that little bit of white space there. I was tempted to fill that in with a couple of the little berry shapes. Yes. And um, also we talked in the last video about the A's, but you recently made a post on Facebook too about fixing one of the number twos on the chart. Yes. And that is just this right here that has a shorter little tail on it. Yes. And in fact, the... Um Twos further along as well. Um, the first two, as in one, two, three, to me, that doesn't look balanced. And the same in the number 12. And in the number 12, I did put a little tail on my Anne. Like obviously the chart is correct as Anne stitched it. Um, but the two in 20, she, she had forgotten to... Uh, <laughs> Put that on. And I did yesterday post a photograph um, of her two in the 20, and you can see she only had three stitches in the base. <laughs> so I, I corrected that on mine. Mm -hmm. So uh, on mine, I put um, oh. a full two in, and I did it on the 12. But I didn't do it on the two here and I do intend to go back and add one more stitch just so that it, it suits my eye. That will jar on my eye when this is hanging on my wall. Hmm. Well it looks lovely and it looks like you're already caught up for this month. Yes, oh, I, I tell you what, it's so hard to stop and you know if I have two projects, I have two stands set up, but I can't do that with Anne because the temptation is so great to work on her. Each month I have to put her away out of sight. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're enjoying her as well. Oh, I am. Really am. And so speaking of this month's section, I'll just point out on the graph what we're going to be tackling for this month. And it is these two alphabets here, and then including this heavier border, which is just a uh, cross stitch alternating colors. Mm -hmm. And so that's our very achievable section for this Absolutely. month. Absolutely. And I think that bottom dividing row, it's so Scottish, it's, it's so reminiscent of tartan. Well, and that's an excellent transition into the first question that we have from uh, Anne Morrison Stitcher. Her name is Judy, and she sent in a few questions for us. And her very first question is that in one of her floss tube videos, Nicola said that Anne had characteristics that were clearly Scottish. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about what those are? Well, um, the first thing um, with Scottish samplers is the heavy use of alphabets and initials, family initials. When you see large groups of family initials, that, that my first thought is Scottish. 
And then of course, um, you have the um, alphabets with the curlicues on, you know, that is very, very Scottish. Um, alphabets in eyelet stitch. You see an awful lot of eyelet stitches in Scottish samplers. Um, and then you get to the drooping lily. That is a motif that you see in many Scottish samplers. Um, and the pine trees stitched with the diamond patterns, those are a feature of Scottish samplers. Um, so those are all the things that sort of immediately speak Scottish. Like obviously you have many different um, styles of Scottish samplers, but these are um, so typical of schoolgirl samplers. And it's so typical that I have another sampler here that has the drooping lily. Mm, gorgeous. Oh. This one doesn't have a name, unfortunately. Um, sorry, this hasn't got reflective glass in it. It does have similarities to Anne Sampler, the eyelet heart in the middle. Yeah. Oh. You see eyelets so often in Scottish samplers. And of course, uh, you know, you see all sorts of colours in Scottish samplers. You know, Scotland has such a rich heritage. It's such a beautiful landscape to the country that you have so many colours all around you. But of course, the greens and the reds, they speak so much of Scottish samplers. But don't think that Scottish samplers are always green and red because that isn't the case. Um, that's a very pretty sampler, very pretty sampler. Um, and then um, this is another Scottish sampler, again with the greens and the, <laughs> the reds in. Um, Beautiful. The Scottish people, because it was a clan system um, and your clan, your family house is very important. You know, family and recording the history of your family was very important to the Scottish people. And that's where all of these alphabets come into play on their samplers. Hmm. Um, I have somewhere, um, This is another Scottish sampler. This is the model that we will be releasing. Very beautiful sampler. And again, you can see the alphabets with the curlicues. The curlicues on this one are in a gold, so they're not quite as stand out, but all of these alphabets have beautiful curlicues coming off them. Mm. An unusual shape A there. Mm -hmm. Oh, another beautiful. A lot of people have commented um, about the um, A on Anne's sampler, um, and that is, as she stitched it, there is no bar. And I've seen that on several Scottish samplers. Um, you know, there isn't a bar or a drop down on this A either. And on the A in the row that we've stitched this month, there's no drop down stitch either. So you've just got this, this inverted V shape. That's how she saw her A. She, well, she was very consistent with that through the whole sampler. So yeah. her intentions. It's such a pretty sampler. <laughs> Sorry, I, I always got to, I look and look and look and you get drawn in. <laughs> Um, so Judy's next question is, um, many historical samplers were stitched inaccurately, such as stitching over two, then accidentally over one or three. In charting something like Anne, would you correct that mistake or would you intentionally leave it in? Um, Anne was a very accurate stitcher. You know, she was a little girl that obviously concentrated on what she was doing. And that's one of the reasons I think the A's were deliberate, the way she stitched them. Um, sometimes on samplers, um, it's very hard to leave 
an error in. Um, I recently charted a border where the little girl had stitched over, when it was meant to be over two, you know, she'd gone over three at the bottom of the cross stitch and over two on the top. Oh boy. So it wasn't a square, it was slanted. How can you chart that so somebody else can stitch it? I like to chart as accurately as possible. I don't like to correct the little girls when I'm charting. Um, so where I can, I always chart exactly as the little girl has, has charted it. But sometimes it is very difficult um, to chart something like that border I was just referring to without mm. the correction. But what we always do is that we say if we've had to correct something. And that has happened very, very rarely, maybe on one or two occasions with the samplers that we've reproduced. And we've always been very careful to say when we've had to make a correction. Hmm. That's good information to have. Uh, Judy's next question is, more, most older samplers have faded or changed color over time. I know that the backs are often more true to the original colors. I'd love to hear how she selects the colors for a reproduction. When you do, do you try to match uh, what goes with the rest of the colors better or simplify the palette because there's just too many color changes? Um, I like to chart exactly as the little girl charted. Um, and I, <laughs> you know, I know that you have to think about the cost of kitting up. But for me, as a needle worker, I would much prefer to stitch a sampler accurately on a reproduction when it comes to colour than to try and make decisions over colour. Um, so, you know, we do religiously try to chart. And I can tell you now that we spend longer on pulling colours than any other aspect of reproducing a sampler. And in fact, I've spent two hours today talking to um, somebody about getting right colours um, for a reproduction sampler. It's very difficult. Um, you have to spend a lot of time. When I first started, I was going round in circles and then I realised that whenever I looked at colour, it had to be in the same light because otherwise it would change throughout the day. Um, so I always set myself up, funny enough, in a spot here. When I'm charting, I, I have a table at the side of my study with my daylight lamp and I always look at it under that light so that I have a consistency because light alters colour so much. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we chart from the front, sometimes we chart from the back. There's no hard and fast rule, it's really how that sampler speaks to us. We prefer to use the colours from the front, but if a colour is bleached out, so it's, there, there is no colour, you're not really reproducing that little girl's needlework because she didn't choose a bleached colour. Right. You know, she might have chosen a beautiful pink. Well, why would we want to stitch that with an off white <laughs> when it was a beautiful pink that she chose? So there's lots of things that you have to take into consideration when you're deciding front or back. And sometimes you can't access the back of the sampler. The sampler I was talking to today with a, about, with a fellow designer, um, the sampler is being conserved um, and it would be a terrible shame to destroy the conservation that's uh, being carried out on the sampler to access the back of the sampler. So in this case, that particular sampler is being charted from the front. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. And the, um, Judy's final question is that sometimes threads do decay over time to extent that there's nothing left but the holes. Have you ever tried to tackle a sampler that had that much deterioration for your reproduction? Um, we have a sampler that we'll be releasing this year where the date, there's one uh, numeral out of the date that had 
just disappeared and there was no evidence there was no you couldn't see where stitches had been made so we made the decision to leave that number missing because we couldn't make you know we, we could not see it sometimes when the thread is disintegrated under very very high magnification you can see the holes that were made to make the stitch so you can work out what it should have been. In that case, we would add it, but we would never presume, we would want to be certain that it was correct. And the other thing is sometimes like with a verse, um, you, know, um, you, you know, say the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, well, if the H was missing off heaven, you know it's an H. Mm -hmm. And if you have the font of in the sample of what the H would be, then that's something you can confidently add. But, you know, you don't always know what the verse might say. And if there's bad deterioration, you can't work it out. Well, if you're going to add another verse, you need to say that this is what you've put in because the original had dis deteriorated, so it wasn't, you know, chartable. Right. Uh, I, I'm going to pull one of my antiques off the wall and it kind of fits in here and see if we can see it. Um, and then I'm actually going to give a tour of a couple of the other pieces that are hanging on the back of my wall. So this is uh, just an antique that I have in my collection. Yes. And here would be an example on this side here, sorry about the glare, but where th there's yeah. so much verse loss or stitching yeah. loss that it would be a little bit of a challenge oh. to make out what it was meant to be. It's something about a ship. So it would be very interesting to do some research yeah. and see if I could figure out what the, mm -hmm. that was. I have a sampler here. This is one of my favorite samplers. Now, when this is charted, this lady, she changed 1820 into 1826. Huh. Um, she put six, she took six years off her age. So that will be an interesting dilemma. Do you stitch it with the original date or do you stitch it with the doctored date? Hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. So as a designer, would you include both options? Um, I would chart it with 1820, but I would write in the, in, the, in the background story of the sampler to say that this was a vanity sampler where Anne had changed her sampler by six years. I wouldn't mind knocking six years off my age. <laughs> 16 years. <laughs> uh, so um, the there's two samplers behind me that you haven't seen for a year now. Uh, yes. These are Hands Across the Sea models that mm -hmm. I brought home with me from Nashville last year. That's right. With the intention of framing them and hanging them in our shop but um, I haven't done it before now because our shop is still closed to people being in. But with vaccinations and numbers dropping, I'm anticipating that we'll be able to open in not too very long. So I've gotten these yeah. two quite big girls framed and um, I'll be moving them to the shop shortly. Mm -hmm. So this on this side is the stitched model of your Jane Vaughan sampler. That's right, which I stitched. Oh, it's just beautiful. There's some satin stitch areas in there that are just so well done and the sheen of the silk just adds so much to the sampler. And I think I see the antique of that sitting over your shoulder. Yes, she's here. This is the antique of Jane Bourne. Oh. Such treasures. They're just treasures. This is one of my favourite samplers, my favourite band samplers. And this one lives in the study 
Um, and when I'm sat at my desk, I look up and I can see her. And when Jane is home with me, she sits or she hangs by my stitching chair, the model. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think which is the sample that we left the date part of the date off. I'm not sure I've got that one out here. Got so many models at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to work my way through them as quickly as possible. Well, your head might just just be so full with all of those details. I can't imagine. Yeah, when you're researching them, you've got to sort of compartmentalize them, otherwise you could get the information confused. And mm -hmm. of course, so many samplers are Anne samplers or Jane samplers or Elizabeth samplers. It's really nice when you get a different name. And then over my other shoulder here, this is Mary Lee. Yes. And it's so this also is the model that came yes. home with us from Nashville. And yeah. I just can't wait to have her on the wall in the shop and have people come in and admire. And it, as you can tell, it's a very good size sampler. It is a beautiful, and it's beautiful as a well. The blues in that sampler. And those are the original colors um, from the front of the sampler. On both of those samplers, those are the colors from the front. Mm. They're treasures. I'm very lucky to have them. We also have the Clayton sampler, but um, our framer wasn't able to get it done in time for our video. So I'll be showing that off later. Okay, you've got Sally Stansfield as well. Yes. So the framed ones that um, I think there's three that I took from Nashville that are framed. And actually those went home with Cassie to needle in a haystack with the idea that when the border was open, we were going to have an exchange. Mm -hmm. So yes, so that hasn't happened. The Canada-US border has been closed pretty much since we snuck back through after the Nashville market okay. last we year. We got that just in time. Yes, we sure did. The timing was wonderful. Yeah. So this uh, coming weekend is our Needlework Expo, which is gonna be our virtual version of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I have plans to have Zoom meetings with um, all of our friends, our shop owner friends in the evenings, maybe pour a glass of wine and have a good visit with them. So that'll be wonderful, as close as it gets to the real thing as we can do right now. Yeah, I had a stitching last night via Zoom with um, there were six of us and we spent the evening stitching and talking and um, it was very pleasant. Oh. You know, it, it's nice to spend time with your needlework friends. And it's so natural to sit and stitch and, and chat. <laughs> <laughs> Something I look forward to getting back to for mm -hmm. sure. Yes. So speaking of original samplers, one thing that I've always kind of wondered and a question that one of our Ann Morrison uh, members came up with was, we don't think we've ever seen the original Ann Morrison sampler on one of your videos. Well, that's because we were keeping it for the stitch along. And here is the original Ann Morrison. Oh, oh lovely. Oh, that's so wonderful to see. Her little A. <laughs> mm -hmm. And speaking of the faded out letters, hey, those the curly Q B and the D, they're very hard to see. They are, but they're that beautiful blue. Um, oh, yes. Oh, that lovely blue. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never taken an out of the frame. The colours I use for, to reproduce it are the colours on the front of the original sampler. Um, and I know that some people have changed this blue and I think that's wonderful if with their eye they wanted to change it. But this delicate blue does add to the sampler. Mm -hmm. But we all see colour differently. Yeah. So, look at her, her eyelets. They must have taken that little girl so long to do. 
I think that Anne showed a lot of diligence stitching this sampler. She really did. It's a very pretty sampler. Very pretty. You see, with Anne, can you see the letter O, the P and the Q? Oh. There was deterioration, but you can actually see the path of the letter. Um, you know, I can, I can see the holes in the linen, just looking at it from here, of where the stitches actually were. So with that, you have no problem adding those stitches back in. But that's the only place on her sampler that there was thread loss, which was the part of the O, the P, and part of the Q. Mm. Mm. So there she is. Oh, lovely. Could I ask you to do a close up of the eyelets? I know that people on the Facebook group are, a lot of them are quite concerned about how their eyelets are going to look. And when you were holding up and sampler, her eyelets are not perfect. So no, I don't know. Oh, yep, they're all different shapes. Yeah, all squashed up. And you know, the thing is, you can stitch them with eight legs instead of six legs if that's what you would like to do. You can stitch them with a cross stitch. They would also look lovely in rice stitch. Mm -hmm. I've seen these. Um, letters stitched in rice stitch on Scottish samplers before now. Um, so, you know, there's no reason why you can't do something like that if that's more appealing to you and it's a pleasanter stitch for you. Mm -hmm. well, and speaking of the eyelets, I did want to say our thanks to Angela Summerside and her husband oh. for all of the work that they've done to provide the letters for personalization and um, pathways for that island. Yeah, that was a lot of work. Yeah. I think people are really gonna make good use of that. Absolutely. Um, on this Scottish sampler, which has the drooping lily in the same as Anne, the little girl did do some eyelets and she did her eyelet heart, but for her letters here, she didn't use eyelets, she used um, cross stitch and she outlined the cross stitch with back stitch or double running stitch. Mm. That little girl had the freedom to choose what she used to stitch them. Um, but they're all in groups of four. Um, so for anybody who wants to change their, um, you know, their initials or, their hearts, they can change them and not feel that they are betraying the spirit of the sampler. I expect that some of the little girls in Anne's class didn't use eyelets for their initials. Hmm. Yeah. Lots of good thoughts. Um, so only two more things that I wanted to touch on. One was, and you've already showed a quick picture of her, um, is our sampler for our draw. Um, mm -hmm. That's the Eliza Nesbitt sampler. That's right. So everyone who completes the Ann Morrison sampler and sends us in a picture of their finished sampler by the 5th of December of this year will be entered into a draw to win this actual antique sampler. Yeah. And I'll put the email address for the, to enter the contest in the box below, um, but what a Scottish sampler that is. It's beautiful. And it's, this is in really nice condition as well. Um, we've reproduced it and it's currently being stitched in wool. And it's been mm. stitched in Iceland uh, by Vina Perica. And um, Vina tells me she hopes to finish this by the end of this month. And she's really enjoyed stitching the sampler with wool. Mm. Um, so, very pretty sampler. So I had it reglazed um, because the glass that was in the sampler, um, it was a funny glass, you couldn't see clearly through the glass, so she's been reglazed, but she's in the frame that she originally came in. That's a really lovely prize for somebody to win and to hang on their sampler wall. 
Well, absolutely. And we sure thank you for your generosity oh, in that. I love stitch alongs. I think it's, I think the stitch along is everything about what stitching should be to women. It's women or needleworkers, I should say, coming together to share their love of the needle. So, you know, I, I'm, I love stitch alongs and I'm so pleased that I'm participating in this stitch along as well. Mm. Yes. We're glad that you are too. It just creates a different, um, uh, extra amount of energy, I think. <laughs> so then that brings me to our plans for our next stitch along. And we're still keeping those kind of under our hat. We will, yeah. in, in coming weeks, we're going to have um, the picture to share. It's going yeah. to the photographer from the model. And uh, right. we'll have that to share. And it'll be a stitch along that we're aiming to start in the fall of this year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, very excited. It's a very different sampler for hats. Um, and, you know, it's been stitched and I received it last week in the post. And as you know, I stretched and laced the sampler yesterday. So um, it's difficult going to my framers at the moment because of lockdown, but I'll get that sent to my framers and then from my framers, it'll be photographed and then we can start to share some images. Yeah. Well, it's really um, interesting for me to be involved in this part of the process too, from the model stitching to then hearing about the framing and the photography and then writing the booklet and yeah. I'm really enjoying being on that end of everything. Because was it at Nashville last year that we both got to see the sampler for the first time? Yes. It was, wasn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's surprising sometimes how long a sampler actually takes from when you first see it to when you acquire it to when you chart it, you know, sometimes you wait a long time for the minimum of threads and, you know, it's quite a lengthy process. And then sometimes a sampler can arrive and you love it so much, you chart it and you stitch it, you know, very, very quickly. But um, yeah, I think <laughs> the sampler that we're going to have the next stitch along for, I am excited about it um, because it's different and it has um, a lovely bearing for you. Mm -hmm. as well yeah. yes I'm excited too so everybody will have to stay tuned for more yeah. news about that in the next little while and I hope that people who are stitching Anne will join us to stitch the next sampler as well mm -hmm. well I think that everybody will be really excited about it it's just beautiful thank you thank <laughs> you well Nicola thank you so much for joining me today you're welcome it's Thank you for asking me. All right. Well, have a good evening. I'm just on my way to the shop for the day with our time change. So um, we'll talk to you soon. All right, then. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.